Russell Simmons runs a music, fashion, and film empire that he started from scratch. I know, with the founding of Def Jam Records. It might surprise you to hear this incredibly busy and diversified individual credits slowing down and meditation for much of his success. Like many other high achievers and celebrities, Simmons practices transcendental meditation. And his newest book, Success Through Stillness, Meditation Made Simple, can help anyone who feels that they're just too busy to slow down. I think everybody feels that. Uh, to find out more, you can attend Russell Simmons free of free, free. I'm giving the money away anyway. I have are you, book. I are you doing it. that like Bill Gates? You're going to give away most of your fortune? Um, I don't have a fortune like Bill Gates, but yeah, I'm giving away the, all the proceeds from this book, certainly, and all the books that I've, I've written a number of bestsellers on wow. the subject of happiness, and I always give the money away. So Wow, very cool. It's a free event tonight at University Temple United Methodist Church in the U District. We're going to post all the details at BobRivers.com, and after you hear him talk this morning, you'll want to go. Hmm? Free. Free. And uh, yeah. we'd like to also thank Carter <laughs> Subaru <laughs> Live like, wow, Theater. Wow, he's giving them away. He's a selfish, yeah. usually selfish. <laughs> uh, well, I, we were just doing this uh, story about the job with the highest percentage of psychopaths. It was a, it's a statistic out today, and it's CEO. And it says that the you know CEOs, lawyers, media personality, salespersons, they all have to be sort of heartless in what they do. And... I was thinking, you know, a big record company, I mean, your uh, music label, clothing, fashion lines, uh, author, and all of this stuff, you have to have a kind of drive and an energy uh, and a oh, desire, that's right? True. No? No. You know, the world, um, people believe that, and so it becomes true for them. The idea of being a good giver is, is, is a, critical. As an entrepreneur, you want to do things that people need. And if you give people things they need, good givers are great getters, right? So you get because you give. Not you, you know. So people, you know, they go to work every day. They, they're told they should have anxiety. Um, I get up. If I get my six hours sleep and I get to meditate twice in a day, and if I get to go to yoga, wait. <laughs> that's two hours of yoga, 40 minutes of meditation, and I run like fashion. That's true. I'm shipping Macy's today. First time all Macy's? Our culture. Yeah, Let's Macy's. A big plug for Macy's. Yeah. That you're yeah. not doing for free. I'm. I'm um, I have a, a digital solutions company, which we do advertising for lots of companies. I have a mm-hmm. digital, um, like it's like a TV station. If you go to All Deaf Digital, you'll see all. Of, we shot 300 videos the last six months, and a lot of them going to be pilots. We're shooting pilots now mm-hmm. for these first episodes. Uh, Series. So and in then, business, so you're I do all this work. I do twice as much in half the time because hmm. I'm not full of anxiety and I'm not nerved out. And all right, let's talk about that because as I'm listening to talk about your yoga and your meditation, I'm going, who has the time to do that? And yet you're you only saying work in the present. People are never in the present, so they don't work. Say so say, say more working, about not being in the present. What do you mean? They're not they're not awake. I, 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 I want to know about that later. Actually, and myself <laughs> included, a lot of the time and not awake. You know, in your present. I mean, you guys, uh, you played basketball once upon a one time, right? Mm-hmm. Sure. Right. 40 for the 80 pounds ago, sure. Right. And the, when you ever been in a, in a, in a um, zone where everything moves slow? Mm-hmm. That's the way the world is moving. It's moving slower than we think it's moving. Yeah, we have the fluctuations of the mind that cause us suffering and sadness, and we disconnect from the present moment, and we miss all. You know, you've seen a sunset, and everything moves slow, right? You've seen that mm-hmm. sunset? You've been in a car accident? All that noise... So if we can calm the noise, which is, you know, I mean, that's the, everybody said be still and know. Every single prophet told you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in the Yoga Sutras, in fact, the, the number one purpose of yoga, not only the physical, but all of the different disciplines is to still the mind. Yoga is a state where the mind is not fluctuating. So this is what we want to achieve. Christ consciousness, nirvana, samadhi, I don't know what you call it. You know, there's different names, taqwa, Muslims call it. So we're all looking to quiet the mind so we can be awake. And the only time you laugh is when that joke hits you and everything goes away, the future and the past, Mm -hmm. and it tickles you and you you start to giggle, right? Because that's that beauty with no noise. And the same is that you have a creative second when you invent something or do something new. Musicians have it, you know, as like I said, ball players have. You all have it, you know, when you're focused and you read a book and you stop breathing. So this is why we meditate. We meditate to quiet the mind. It's the, gre- the best tool we have to uh, promote a quiet mind. I've considered meditation. I've, I don't think I've ever really done it. And part of what's kept me from doing it is 
I'm not sure if my legs would do that. Do you have to have a funny position to meditate? No, or no, can you, you can sit anyway. You know, as long as you can sit erect. So I can sit in my lazy boy at home. But and, you can have a, a sit up if you can, right? So you sit up if you can. Uh, you don't have to cross your legs. That's just, you know, that's, you know, that's people do physical asana practice. It's part of stretching for flexibility, which is more of a yoga uh, aspect. But the, that, no, yeah. but the idea of yoga is you smile and breathe in difficult poses. <laughs> that's the practice of yoga. And you like, do that a couple hours a day? Smile and breathe in a difficult pose. Joe's yeah. trying to take a nap and figure out how he can write it off his meditation. <laughs> <What's going on? laughs> no, no. You see, your mind is fluctuating when you're sleeping. But when you sit and let the mind settle, the fluctuations slow down. And the less thoughts, the more happiness. And the more thoughts, the more sickness and sadness. That's reality. That's did you over and over. Did you always know this, or did you come to no, find no, this no, out? I, I Were you stressed out and crazy at one no, point? I took yeah. con- tons of drugs to dumb the mind down. Every drug, lots of every drug. It was a lot of fun, but it was only temporary. And would sometimes, you know, be wake up and you'd be twisted, have you know, be sick, you know, sad the next morning, right? And then also half the time you're high, you're sick and sad, right? But only a couple minutes you have. The freedom that you're looking for, that we're all looking for all the time. And um, you can do that better. I like morning meditation better than late night drinking. Mm. So I stopped the drinking thing 26 years ago. Mm. Stopped doing drugs and shit, stuff like that. Now, you, uh, you say you want people to be happy, you want them to be successful, and, um, and compassionate. Those three things. Mm-hmm. And uh, but to be successful, well, out compassionate there. goes along with happy. You can't be successful unless you're compassionate and happy. Then you ain't successful if you ain't compassionate and happy. It's how, so that's, they just they don't have go. to. They all work to yeah, intertwine together. Make it the other way. And you, uh, but that's not necessarily going to make you a living or make you money to be those three things. You're living, you know, life is only goal is a comfortable seat for real. That's it. Be happy. It's helpful if you also discover LL Cool J, Beastie Boys, and Run DMC, too. And Jay-Z and Kanye West. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when they try to make me old. And Jay-Z and Kanye West. And Jay-Z and Kanye, Kanye, right. Kanye West. And whatever clothing you're making right now. All I mean, about culture now. In other words, you have to accomplish something. <laughs> yeah. No, I keep At it some moving, point, baby. Listen to let, me let me challenge you a little bit. Let no, me wait, just, challenge let me. Just, okay. Let me just tell you. Okay. I keep it moving. Giving. I keep giving. Yeah. You know, and I like giving. I like doing things that are fun. It's not one black designer. I'm shipping Macy's now. I'll mm. be the black designer. It's important to, to promote diversity, right? It's important to also make, because the difference between the urban graduate and Ralph Lauren is a, my Argyle sweater is purple, and it fits a little different. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? There's a, so there's a little bit of, there's a hole in the market. But wait a minute. It, I can't believe. Young designers need a job, and uh, it's fun. It's but I can't giving. believe you can do all this without stressing out. Some, you know, sometimes you have to be freaked out, running, c- catching a deadline, stressing out. The thing I'd be worried about is chicks. Man, if I could just get rid of the chick thing. Chicks, the chick. <laughs> I think that was Lord Buddha's last problem before enlightenment, too. I think he was <laughs> twisted with girls. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I said, yeah, the, yeah. the temptress. Remember he went up to her, he told her, I could meditate. She said, Nick, go get some money. Remember, he went back and got sure. the money mm-hmm. for the t- temptress, right? So he struggled with that, too, to the last minute. But the last pa- problem before enlightenment. But passions are passions. and you, you Not can't... all of them. I ain't passionate about getting a new Rolls Royce. You're not. <laughs> I'm not passionate about junk. I'm you're not passion, passionate, you're passionate about, about women, though, Is that because right? you've already had plenty of that stuff and you re- learned that you don't yeah, need it? Because some of us have that. to get it first yeah, before we go, that. oh, this yeah, is not sometimes important. Sometimes you don't get it and you realize you don't let go of it. Mm. Sometimes you get it and you just keep chasing it. I mean, it, I don't really, you know, really rich people are really sick sometimes and really poor people are really sick sometimes because they're told about their predicament and they big up their, you know, right. you know, I got a big car, they like my car, me get another big car. Um you know, I'm suffering because I watch it on TV and they told me I'm suffering, so I'm going to suffer more. People in the middle, you know, more often are happy, you know. That's just the research. But the reality is, you know, getting stuff doesn't make you happy. Money doesn't make you happy. But if you're happy, happy makes you money. Uh-huh. So you try to work with that, you know what I mean? Work from a place of I tell needing you, nothing. Those new Rolls stuff. Royces make you pretty happy. I, I saw the newest it. ones. They're nice. You know, they'll like do they'll do the like stars in, in in your roof. They will do the constellation on the day you were born. Where the In your Rolls Royce? Yeah, or, or in your, oh, you got to have one of those. Or you can walk outside and They're look up. They're good to get you laid. <laughs> 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 really, they help if you're dealing with that chick thing, you can have the Rolls Royce. But I don't like, but not the kind of chicks I'd be trying to hit, though. 
No. <laughs> Mostly animal activists, you know, kind of cool alternative chicks. They don't like that. So. Now, are you, do you currently have- Not a Prius, though. I don't do that. <laughs> I hit him with the Range Rover, you know what I yeah. mean? Yes, the Range Rover is kind of slick. <laughs> it's like, well, he's got a Range Rover, and you know, no, you know, he's a cool dude. No you know? coyotes had to die for you to get the Range Rovers. Okay, with No, the but I try to get the plastic seats, but they don't make them. <laughs> <laughs> I got the plastic seats on my bug. I'm a vegan, you know. I'm a big animal activist. We, we read that. that, and and do you uh, have you uh, have you always been a vegan, or is this no? Only the last fifteen years. Fifteen? Well, that's a long time. That's not a commitment. if you my age. No, that's true. <laughs> if you're well, fifty six, fifteen years ain't so long. Um, what did you find the hardest thing about becoming a vegan, and what was the most surprising thing? It wasn't very hard, you know. I living in New York and traveling and back and forth to L.A. and all. It wasn't that hard, you know. Um, I found a lot of good junk food. I got lots of good junk vegan stuff. You got Veggie Grill here, right? They're not so bad. They don't do that much tofu and all that. They're better than the crap you eat if you eat steak. I mean, did you see that new stuff about, I keep almost wanting to say the other word, the <laughs> stuff about steak? That no. if you eat 30% of your animal protein from steak, that's like 20 cigarettes a day. Just so what? Just so oh, yeah, know. it's really bad. Red meat is the worst thing for you. 20 eat. cigarettes a day you're feeding a child? Mm. Eat your steak, honey. You're, you know, good steak.